What is up YouTube, Johnny B here again today and we're gonna be bringing you a video on an American car this time. This is a 2016 Ford Mustang GT or as many like to call it, a 5.0. It's on airlift suspension. And now the next step for this car is to go wide body. You can see here, you guys, I'm pretty sure you already saw the flare, you guys have seen the title. We're gonna be wide bodying this Ford Mustang today. This is a car that I haven't done yet. I've done various cars, but a Mustang has not been one of them. So this is gonna be exciting to try out a new platform to try to figure out how to do the, the best cuts, how to seal up the rear the best. And uh, you know, just kind of figure out the kit. Also see the best fitment because although it has some cutouts for the headlights here, doesn't seem to line up perfectly. So I gotta decide what body lines work with what to make it all flow and look good and not just look like a body kit has just been slapped on. So I got the flares kind of mounted on, kind of with the idea that uh, this little lip here is to go around the headlight and kind of give it, you know, a decent look to where it flows good. If I go any higher, there's a body line here where it would just be like open. So it needs to be right on that body line. If I go any further, it'll be like a gap under there. So that's gonna be where it stays here. I, I seem to have need to like fold this to kind of get it to line up with that. Cause this, this is one of the biggest issues when you do wide body kits, if the arc doesn't match up here and you get like this weird gap, it's never gonna look good. So you need to go ahead and make sure that that is flush with the actual body arch. And then here, this little body line here on the kit should match up with this body line here so that it looks good. So I kind of got it in a rough area. It's a little bit hard cause it's, you know, there's there's gaps and everything. So this, like, like every other kit is gonna need to be kind of installed and like folded over or like, I don't know. It's kind of like molded onto where you have to like wrestle with it to get it to fit in the proper spot. But it's definitely doable. So after figuring out where I wanted it to sit, everything's looking pretty good. The body line here is lining up pretty nicely with the kit. It kind of comes up here because there's like a little bit of a design there. Comes all the way down. And then that body line lines up with that body line right here. It actually lines up with the same like height of the original fender as well. So if you look there, it doesn't make it any lower or higher. So that's cool. And there are the front flares installed. I did that one and then as soon as I got that one done, mimicked it on this side. Got it done as well. It's looking really, really good. So now that we have the flares on, we know that we can't cut past that. Obviously, there's probably a frame piece in there that I wouldn't cut past anyways, but we can cut pretty close to this without worrying about of it showing because if you cut anywhere past that, you're gonna have to buy a whole nother fender and it's just a whole lot of extra work that's not necessary. Car's looking nice and wide. And once we get the fitment right with the wheels, it's gonna look even better. So I got the cut done. As you can see, I, where the body kit starts is down here, but since this part's already kind of straight lined, I just kind of try to keep it. Same thing with this side, just kind of keep it and just kind of bring it up. I brought it up pretty close to where I bolted the over fender, mainly because even though the frame sits there, I could have just cut it where the frame stops. Uh, this this car's on airlift. It's got, you know, cambered out wheels. So even if, if I would were to cut it level with that, if he was cambered and really wanted to sit, you know, and lay on the frame, then this would be in the way. So I wanted to just cut it to have extra space, but having the bolt holes already there really helps out to make sure that I don't over cut. So first I go, I go ahead and cut with the angle grinder. And then I use another angle grinder with like a flappy disc. So we kind of like smooth out the edges to make it all, all nice. And then down here, there wasn't much I could cut because there's like a bracket that holds part of the bumper. So I needed to leave that bracket. So that's why that spot is there instead of getting chopped off completely. So I hope that doesn't interfere later on. If not, I will have to cut it. And the Mustang, the fenders are made out of aluminum. So there's not really that much worry with, with rust, but I still went ahead and gave it a little paint right around where I cut just to make sure it disappears. So it's not visible and it just looks a lot cleaner. Next step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take a blade and cut the over fender probably here, maybe a little bit further back. I like to leave the inner fender liner because, you know, for for example, here you, you have the, the headlight uh, and if there's a bunch of water going in, it's gonna 
it could damage something so i'd rather just leave it on there no they're here for a purpose so i like to leave as much as i can but like this whole lip edge that kind of like hangs down is what i always cut here is the finished product now we can go ahead and put the over fender back on now it's time to do the rears we got the fronts done they're looking great look at that looks amazing i'm sure when it's like slammed it's gonna look even better you can see the front over here so now let's put the car in and let's start chopping up the rears so now i got the rear the wheels covered just in case i got some tape on the fender flare just to kind of hold it up and i'm seeing that there's like a body line here so we kind of wanted to line up with this line and then this body line here we want it to line up with the bottom of this piece i think that looks really good that way it looks like it's supposed to be there and then for the front so there's this body line here and it should line up you know with that body line there and then same thing as the front it like lines up with the original like quarter panel so i think that's what they were going for with this kit to make it the same you know the same art the same height not kind of like the rocket bunny where it's much higher they wanted to make it the same with this one this side is done looking great and then this side is on as well so now that i got the kit on the, wherever where i want it i'm gonna go ahead and take them off so now that i took off the body kit after drilling all the holes i am looking at where i can cut and usually i like to give it, go a little bit above the body line i could probably cut on the body line but i want to go a little bit over because the the wheel kind of sits in here and the tire only goes about that far up which is probably around the body line but i'm gonna cut a little bit extra you want to make sure that you cut where the tire won't hit and it won't be rubbing so i just like to give a general radius cut uh, to make it possible, you know, because you don't want, want it rubbing in case he wants to drive it, I guess, when it's like aired out. You know, technically in theory, you could cut way up here, but in that case, the, the back panel would be much harder to kind of like fold over and seal up. So here, it, it's actually flat up to here. So if I were to cut it, I wouldn't even need to cut and weld this section. So I might try that first. I'm going to air out all the way and see, you know, how far it goes. I did air out in the front to kind of like verify. You can see right there how the tire is like nice and level with the with the fender. Obviously, when it brings it out, it'll be a lot a lot nicer. The cut is done. I'm gonna have to kind of like grind it out to kind of get the shape to be you know a perfect circle or as close to a perfect circle as possible. I did it on the body line first, so I can air out and try to see if that works. If that doesn't work, then I'm gonna have to cut at the line that I had marked before, just to get that extra clearance. After cutting the first layer, there's actually a layer behind it you can't see right now that I, I tend to leave. So now what I do is I put a pry bar in here and pry off this first layer to be able to see the back layer. And normally this is just kind of like pinched weld or it's uh, seam sealed. And in this case, it looks like it's rolled over. So maybe if I just smack it, it should all pop off. One of the areas that I have to worry about is here. So I have to cut straight through here and, and straight through this bracket and any metal that's behind here to make sure that this completely disconnects. It's just as I thought, it's seam sealed. You can see there, it's kind of like overlapped and seam sealed. You can see the inner metal piece there that I was talking about. I'm just gonna keep prying this off until I remove it all. So I'm looking at this and it looks like I could still go use a little bit more up because I'm, I'm feeling the top of the wheel well and the top of the wheel well seems to be a little bit higher up here. So if I can make it go up there and then bring the top of the wheel well straight out and matching with the outer quarter panel, I think that's probably gonna be the lowest we're gonna be able to go. That's how it should look like after you're done cutting the first top layer and uh, taking it off. So I got the rear quarter panel cut a little bit extra to where it's pretty flat with the area behind it. Now all I have to do is bring it all up. As you can see there, I grinded it down as well make it flat weld it and then chop it all off and seal it up so i'll show you guys that perfectly flat with the the top so that way that's literally the farthest you can go any further than this is kind of start angling weird so having it there this the wheel would touch here anyway so there's no point in cutting more so i think that looks pretty good actually nice and smooth the top is matching up lining up pretty nicely and uh you know all the cuts are looking good now i have to weld it 
I did the same thing to the other side. I'll show you guys over here. Like that, nice and flat. So, time to weld it up. Got it all welded. It's all spot welded because you can't weld directly all the way through because you will burn the quarter panel will pretty much make holes in it so you have to spot weld slowly and be at a very low voltage and low speed to be able to weld uh, sheet metal that's like this then but i got them all welded nice and tight so now i'm going to do is chop it all off to, to make it as smooth as possible before sealing it up so same thing on this side just gotta go ahead and cut that all off with the angle grinder got the rear quarter panel sealed you can see there they get all covered up so there's no cracks that way nothing goes through whether that be rain you know dirt mud whatever you drive through you don't want to know that going in it could even be smoke especially in a 5 if you're doing a little bit of burnout smoke can get into your cabin if that's not sealed up properly but in this case we sealed it all up and then the only thing left to do is to let it dry and then paint it so i got it painted up you can't even tell where it is i sealed because the flat black just looks so good that it just hides everything unless you really you know pay attention to it so that's good same thing on the other side look at that looks so good it's still drying on this side so now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna clean up a little bit put the wheels on and i'm gonna air out see how it looks like aired out like this without any flares i think it's gonna look pretty sick so now it's time to put on these stretchy boys and see how it looks aired out. These are gonna look sick on here. He's gonna need to either get other wheels or get some spacers to get these to fill in the kit. But regardless of what he does, it's gonna look sick. Wheels are on, fully aired out, and we still have room. I believe the car's subframe is literally chilling. The subframe and the rear diff is literally sitting on the floor, so it's pretty crazy to see. Car looks actually pretty cool. Look at that. Show you guys the other side. Very interesting how it just like lines up, it gives the car a whole different look. Here is the final walk around give you guys a little peek of the fitment it's not the best obviously it still needs to come out but it actually looks kind of good even without the wheels poking out all the way like they should but definitely looking awesome I'm excited even though it's not my car I'm like excited of how it's all looking and I don't really I'm not really a, a stance guy I don't really stance my cars but I can appreciate a good stance a good you no know, camber Look at that. looking good that looks great so the car is done Customer's gonna come pick it up shortly. He's gonna get to, you know, enjoy seeing this car in person for the first time. I think that's gonna be awesome. Awesome feeling for me, even though, you know, it's not my car. I just think it's amazing, you know, how a car can change so much with a wide body kit. It's just something that it just gives you like a nice feeling, you know, being a car guy, just appreciating, you know, somebody's build and, uh, you know, not always having something negative to say. You guys know I love, having my car set up for track and for race and all that stuff. But I can appreciate it, you know, having a car that's stanced out and looking at it in person. It's definitely a hard feat to accomplish. It's not easy. You have to buy all kinds of like arms to get the camber, you know, to achieve that level uh, of camber. And now with the wide body kit, this car is just gonna go up to a whole different level. It's not just gonna be your normal GT, just with wheels and a lowering kit or in this case an airbag system i'm excited for you know what's to come of this car you know being a part of it is always something nice you know that i could say hey i worked on that car i was able to make that kit fit on there and make it look nice and then maybe later on in the future uh he decides we're gonna go ahead and paint match the kit so for now it's just gonna be the install and uh you guys will see more more video 
I will also leave, you know, a little link to his Instagram if you guys are interested in seeing more of the car. You know, sometimes it's just this video isn't enough. You wanna see more pictures and see, you know, more angles of the car, especially when it's done. You guys are gonna to wanna to definitely see that. So I'll leave the Instagram link down below uh, so you guys can check it out. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, you guys have a great day. You're good. Josh.